The Council on Foreign Relations is a private group not affiliated with the U.S. government, but made to look that way. Just as the Federal Reserve, the name Council on Foreign Relations sounds official to the unsuspecting ear, and they even print a magazine called Foreign Affairs to help pacify the organization in the public mind. But the truth is, the CFR is not a council belonging to the U.S. government, and is, in fact, a secret society masquerading as an official organization. If they called it Republicrats for World Government, or Demopublican Global Governance Group, then the herd might notice. Even if they called it the American Royal Institute for International Affairs, the sheeple might raise an eyebrow. This is the same reason our American leaders are called presidents and not prime ministers, even though they are all royalty. Admiral Chester Ward was a U.S. Judge Advocate General of the Navy and CFR member for 16 years. He said the purpose of the CFR was, quote, promoting disarmament and the submergence of U.S. sovereignty and national independence into an all-powerful one-world government. In his book, Kissinger on the Couch, Ward wrote, The lust to surrender the sovereignty and independence of the United States is pervasive throughout most of the membership, and particularly in the leadership of several divergent cliques that make up what is actually a polycentric organization. Harper's, in July 1958, wrote, The most powerful clique in these CFR groups has one objective in common. They want to bring about the surrender of the sovereignty and the national independence of the U.S. They want to end national boundaries and racial and ethnic loyalties, supposedly to increase business and ensure world peace. What they strive for would inevitably lead to dictatorship and loss of freedoms by the people. Congressman John Rarick in 1971 said, The Council on Foreign Relations is the establishment. Not only does it have influence and power in key decision-making positions at the highest levels of government to apply pressure from above, but it also announces and uses individuals and groups to bring pressure from below, to justify the high-level decisions for converting the U.S. from a sovereign constitutional republic into a servile member state of a one-world dictatorship. CFR membership is made up of past, present, and future presidents, secretaries of state, secretaries of defense, ambassadors, senators, congressmen, judges, Federal Reserve System presidents and chairmen, bankers, military leaders, media owners and personalities, lobbyist lawyers, corporate executives, think tank executives, and university presidents. CFR membership is composed of the most influential Americans of the century. Just look at the household names belonging to the CFR. George Bush, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, John F. Kennedy, Dwight Eisenhower, Herbert Hoover, Robert Kennedy, Al Gore, Condoleezza Rice, Jesse Jackson, Colin Powell, Strobe Talbot, James Woolsey, John Dulles, Michael Dukakis, Fred Thompson, John McCain, Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, Rudy Giuliani, John Edwards, Michael Bloomberg, John Kerry, Thomas Keene, Henry Kissinger, Zbigniew Brzezinski, Jonathan Bush, Angelina Jolie, Dan Rather, Diane Sawyer, Barbara Walters, Consuelo Mack, Warren Beatty, William Buckley Jr., Newt Gingrich, Alan Greenspan, Paul Wolfowitz, Averill and Pamela Harriman, David, Nelson, and J. Rockefeller, William and McGeorge Bundy, Brent Scowcroft, and Paul Warburg. Here is just a sampling of the CFR's corporate members. ABC News, American Express, Bank of America, Boeing, Chevron, Citigroup, Coca-Cola, De Beers, ExxonMobil, FedEx, Ford, GE, Google, Halliburton, 
Heinz, IBM, Lockheed Martin, MasterCard, Merck, Merrill Lynch, Motorola, NASDAQ, News Corp, Nike, PepsiCo, Pfizer, Shell Oil, Sony, Time Warner, Toyota, Verizon, and Visa. Gary Allen wrote, Although the membership of the CFR is a veritable who's who in big business and the media, probably only one person in a thousand is familiar with the organization itself, and even fewer are aware of its real purposes. During its first fifty years of existence, the CFR was almost never mentioned by any of the moguls of the mass media. And when you realize that the membership of the CFR includes top executives from the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, the Knight newspaper chain, NBC, CBS, Time, Life, Fortune, Business Week, U.S. News and World Report, and many others, you can be sure that such anonymity is not accidental. It is deliberate. They control or own major newspapers, magazines, radio, and television networks, and they control the most powerful companies in the book publishing business. Nearly every U.S. president since its inception has been a CFR member. Even the non-CFR presidents have had administrations full of members. For instance, Ronald Reagan wasn't a CFR member, but his vice president George Bush was CFR and so were 28 members of his transition team alone. George W. Bush was not a CFR member either, but his father and uncle are. His vice president Dick Cheney is, and his administration is swarming with them. At the founding meeting of the United Nations, there were 74 CFR members. The Clinton administration had over 100 CFR members. The Nixon administration had over 115 CFR members, all in key executive branch positions, most of whom continued through the Ford years, and a few of whom are still in power today. The Council on Foreign Relations, like Skull and Bones, always promotes candidates from both the Democrat and Republican parties, thus ensuring a win for the New World Order. In 1952 and 1956, CFR Republican Dwight Eisenhower ran against CFR Democrat Adlai Stevenson. In 1960, it was CFR Republican Richard Nixon against CFR Democrat John F. Kennedy. In 1964, neither candidate was CFR, but Barry Goldwater was a Freemason, and Lyndon Johnson's administration was full of CFR members. In 1968, it was CFR Republican Richard Nixon versus CFR Democrat Hubert Humphrey. In 1972 was Nixon again, versus CFR Democrat George McGovern. In 1976, CFR Republican Gerald Ford lost to CFR Democrat Jimmy Carter. In 1980 was Mason Republican Ronald Reagan versus CFR Democrat Jimmy Carter and CFR Independent John Anderson. 1984 was Reagan again against CFR Democrat Walter Mondale. In 1988, CFR Republican George Bush ran against CFR Democrat Michael Dukakis. 1992 was Bush again, running against CFR Democrat Bill Clinton. In 1996, Clinton was challenged by CFR Republican Bob Dole. In 2000, CFR Democrat Al Gore lost to Skull and Bones Republican George W. Bush, with CFR running mate Dick Cheney. In 2004, Bush was challenged by Brother Bonesman and CFR Democrat John Kerry. The CFR owns the monopoly market on both presidents and presidential candidates. In the 2008 presidential race, the CFR propped up Democrats Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John Edwards, and Republicans Rudy Giuliani, John McCain, Mitt Romney, and Fred Thompson. In 2012, both frontrunners Mitt Romney and Barack Obama were both CFR. Dr. Carol Quigley wrote, The chief problem of American political life has been how to make the two congressional parties more national and international. The argument that the two parties should represent opposed ideals and policies, one perhaps of the right and the other of the left, is a foolish idea 
acceptable only to doctrinaire and academic thinkers. Instead, the two parties should be almost identical, so that the American people can throw the rascals out at any election without leading to any profound or extensive shifts in policy. The Chicago Tribune editorial on December 9, 1950, wrote, The members of the Council on Foreign Relations are persons of much more than average influence in their community. They have used the prestige that their wealth, their social position, and their education have given them to lead their country toward bankruptcy and military debacle. They should look at their hands. There is blood on them, the dried blood of the last war and the fresh blood of the present one, the Korean War. Almost all CIA directors have been CFR members, including Alan Dulles, Richard Helms, William Colby, George Bush, William Webster, James Woolsey, John Deutsch, and William Casey. Many U.S. Senators were also members, including David Boren, William Bradley, John Chafee, William Cohen, Christopher Dodd, Bob Graham, Joseph Lieberman, George Mitchell, Claiborne Pell, Larry Pressler, Charles Robb, John D. Rockefeller, and William Roth, Jr. For U.S. Congressional Representatives, there has been Howard Berman, Thomas Foley, Sam Gedginson, Richard Gephardt, Newt Gingrich, Amory Hutton Jr., Nancy Lee Johnson, John Lewis, Robert Matsui, Dave McCurdy, Eleanor Holmes Norton, Thomas L. Petrie, Carlos Romero Barcelo, Patricia Schroeder, Peter Smith, Olympia Snow, John Spratt, and Louis Stokes. As for Secretaries of Defense, Neil McElroy, Robert Gates, Robert McNamara, Melvin Laird, Elliot Richardson, Donald Rumsfeld, Harold Brown, Casper Weinberger, Frank Carlucci, and Dick Cheney, and U.S. ambassadors to Australia, Britain, Chile, Czech Republic, France, India, Italy, Japan, Korea, Mexico, Nigeria, Philippines, Poland, Romania, Russia, Spain, South Africa, and Syria. This is just a sampling of the high-level government positions held by hundreds, if not thousands, of CFR members. As Robert Anton Wilson said, if the CFR had millions of members, like, say, the Presbyterian Church, this list might not mean much. But the CFR only has 3,200 members. And Gary Allen wrote, The plan, as publicly stated by the CFR's Richard Gardner, part-time State Department functionary and Columbia University professor of law and international organization, amounts to this. Instead of trying to make the UN a complete world dictatorship immediately, the establishment will identify different problems in different countries. Then, they will propose a solution, which can only be achieved by some kind of international agency, so that each country concerned will be forced to surrender another segment of its national independence. Gardner considers this piecemeal approach the practical road to the end of nationhood.